These are the Fulani people, one of the largest ethnic groups in West Africa, with a rich cultural heritage spanning centuries. They are known for their pastoralism, cattle herding, and nomadic lifestyle, as well as their art, music, and literature. The Fulani people have also played a significant role in regional and global trade, as well as agriculture and livestock management. This documentary aims to explore the diverse and dynamic culture of the Fulani people, from their origins and migration to their contemporary challenges and opportunities. It provides a comprehensive overview of their history, traditional and cultural practices, their political organization and social structures, economic life and livelihood strategies, art, music and literature, religion and spiritual practices, language and linguistic diversity, and their relationship with other ethnic groups and communities. Welcome back to our channel at NBO underscore Ben. The Fulani people are believed to have originated from the Senegal River Valley in present-day Mali and Guinea. They are thought to have migrated eastwards towards the Hausa states of northern Nigeria and Niger in the 14th century. Over the next few centuries, the Fulani people established themselves as a dominant force in the Sahel region, and by the 19th century, they had expanded across West Africa. The Fulani people's migration was driven by a combination of factors, including climate change, economic opportunities, and political instability. They were attracted to areas with abundant water and pasture for their cattle, and they also established trading relationships with other ethnic groups and communities. As the Fulani people expanded, they encountered resistance from some of the existing communities, leading to conflict and violence. However, they also established peaceful relationships with many of the communities they encountered, and they often integrated into local societies and cultures. The Fulani people's expansion was also facilitated by the spread of Islam, which they embraced in large numbers from the 16th century onwards. Islam provided a unifying force for the Fulani people, and it also facilitated their integration into the wider Islamic world. Despite their historical prominence, the Fulani people have faced significant challenges in recent times, including conflicts with other ethnic groups and communities, political marginalization, and economic hardship. However, they continue to play an important role in West African society and culture, and their history and heritage remain a source of pride and inspiration for many. The Fulani people have a rich and diverse culture that is rooted in their traditional practices and beliefs. These practices and beliefs have been passed down from generation to generation and have been shaped by the Fulani people's history, environment, and social structures. One of the most distinctive aspects of Fulani culture is their nomadic lifestyle and cattle herding practices. The Fulani people are known for their skill in managing large herds of cattle, sheep, and goats, and their ability to navigate the vast and challenging terrain of the Sahel region. They move their herds seasonally in search of water and pasture, and their traditional camps, known as Fulbigale or Fulbawuro, are often temporary settlements made of woven grass mats and wooden frames. In addition to their pastoralism, the Fulani people are also known for their intricate and elaborate hairstyles, which are a source of pride and identity. The hairstyles are often braided or twisted and decorated with beads, shells, and other ornaments. They are a way of expressing individuality and social status, and they are often a symbol of beauty and femininity. The Fulani people also have a rich tradition of music and dance, which is an integral part of their social and cultural life. Their music is characterized by the use of instruments such as the salam, a stringed instrument, the hodu, a lute, and the flute, as well as percussion instruments, such as the talking drum. Fulani music is often accompanied by intricate dance routines, which are performed by both men and women. Another important aspect of Fulani culture is their clothing, which is often made of colorful and intricately patterned cloth. The clothing is designed to be both practical and decorative, and it is often tailored to suit the harsh climate and environment of the Sahel region. The Fulani people also have a rich tradition of storytelling and oral literature. They have a rich repertoire of folk tales, proverbs, and myths, which are passed down from generation to generation. These stories often serve as a means of transmitting values, morals, and cultural knowledge, and they are an important part of Fulani identity and heritage. The Fulani people have a distinct political organization and social structure that has evolved over centuries. These structures play a crucial role in maintaining order, resolving conflicts, 
and preserving the cultural values and traditions of the Fulani community. Traditionally, the Fulani society was organized into clans or lineages, known as families or patrilineages, which traced their descent through male ancestors. Each patrilineage was headed by a senior male elder, known as the Arbe, who held significant authority and was responsible for making important decisions on behalf of the family. These patrilineages formed the basis of a larger social unit called the Dhamma, which consisted of several related families. The Dhamma was headed by a chief, known as the Arkbe or Lamido, who had political, administrative, and judicial powers. The Arkbe was responsible for maintaining law and order within the Dhamma, resolving disputes, and overseeing communal affairs. At a higher level, multiple Dhammas were organized into provinces, or emirates, each governed by a paramount ruler known as the Lamido, or Emir. The Emir held significant political authority and served as the ultimate decision maker within the province. The emirates were often hierarchical, with smaller damas paying tribute and allegiance to the higher ranking ones. The Fulani political system was not strictly centralized, but rather operated through a combination of centralized authority and decentralized decision making. While the emir held ultimate power, the autonomy and authority of individual damas and families were respected. This allowed for flexibility and adaptability within the political system, as well as the preservation of local customs and traditions. In addition to the political organization, the Fulani society had well-defined social structures and roles. The society was stratified, with individuals occupying different social statuses based on factors such as lineage, age, gender, and occupation. Men held prominent positions in Fulani society and were responsible for herding livestock, engaging in trade, and participating in governance. Women also played essential roles, primarily in household management, childcare, and agricultural activities. Despite gender-based divisions of labor, Fulani women had a degree of autonomy and influence within their communities. Education and knowledge were highly valued in Fulani society. Education was traditionally imparted through informal channels, with elders passing down knowledge and skills to younger generations. Islamic education played a significant role, with many Fulani children attending Quranic schools to learn Arabic, Islamic principles, and literacy skills. Over time, the Fulani political organization and social structures have undergone transformations due to various factors such as colonization, urbanization, and globalization. While some aspects of traditional systems have persisted, others have adapted or given way to modern political structures and social dynamics. The Fulani people have developed a unique economic system and livelihood strategies that are closely tied to their nomadic pastoralism and agro-pastoral activities. These economic pursuits have sustained the Fulani community for centuries, providing them with food, income, and a means of social and cultural expression. At the core of the Fulani economic system is livestock rearing, particularly cattle, sheep, and goats. The Fulani are renowned for their expertise in managing large herds of animals across vast grazing lands. Livestock serves as a vital source of food, providing milk, meat, and hides, which are utilized for clothing and other essential items. The Fulani employ a transhumant grazing system, which involves moving their herds seasonally in search of fresh pastures and water sources. This mobility allows them to take advantage of the diverse ecosystems and to prevent overgrazing in a particular area. The migration routes and grazing lands are often well established, and the Fulani have intricate knowledge of the landscape and its resources. In addition to livestock, the Fulani people engage in agro-pastoral activities, combining animal husbandry with agriculture. They cultivate crops such as millet, sorghum, maize, and rice, primarily for their own consumption. These crops are well suited to the arid and semi-arid environments of the Sahel region and provide a vital source of sustenance during times of scarcity. The Fulani also participate in trade, leveraging their networks and mobility to engage in regional and cross-border commerce. They are known for their long-distance trading activities, often transporting goods such as salt, textiles, grains, and livestock between different markets. Trade has historically played a significant role in the economic life of the Fulani, facilitating social and cultural exchanges, and contributing to their economic well-being. Within the Fulani society, economic activities are often gendered, with distinct roles and responsibilities for men and women. While men primarily focus on herding livestock, 
women are actively involved in agricultural activities, such as tending to vegetable gardens and cultivating crops. They also engage in small-scale trading, selling dairy products, handicrafts, and agricultural produce in local markets. The Fulani economic system is characterized by reciprocity and communal cooperation. Fulani herders often form cooperative groups, known as dole, to pool their resources, share grazing lands, and provide mutual assistance. These dole play a crucial role in ensuring the collective well-being of the community and managing challenges such as conflicts, droughts, and disease outbreaks. In recent times, the Fulani people have faced various economic challenges, including climate change, land degradation, and competition for resources. These factors have impacted their traditional economic practices, forcing some Fulani communities to adapt to new livelihood strategies. Some have diversified their income sources by engaging in non-agricultural activities such as crafts, entrepreneurship, and wage labor in urban centers. The Fulani people have a rich and vibrant artistic tradition that encompasses various forms of expression including visual arts, music, and literature. These artistic practices are deeply intertwined with their cultural and religious beliefs, serving as a means of communication, storytelling, and celebration. Visual arts hold a prominent place in Fulani culture. Traditional Fulani artwork often features intricate patterns, geometric designs, and symbolic motifs. These designs can be found on various objects, such as calabashes, pottery, textiles, and leather goods. Fulani artisans demonstrate exceptional skill in their craftsmanship, creating aesthetically pleasing and culturally significant pieces. Fulani music is renowned for its rhythmic complexity, melodic beauty, and expressive qualities. Music plays an integral role in Fulani social gatherings, ceremonies, and celebrations. Instruments such as the zalam, a stringed instrument, the hadu, a lute, the flute, and various percussion instruments are used to create rich and diverse musical compositions. The melodies and rhythms often reflect the natural sounds and movements of the Fulani pastoral lifestyle. Dance is closely connected to Fulani music, with elaborate dance routines being performed during festivals, weddings, and other special occasions. <laughs> yeah! Fulani dances are characterized by graceful movements, intricate footwork, and synchronized group formations. They serve as a means of cultural expression social cohesion, and entertainment. Literature also holds a significant place in Fulani culture. The Fulani people have a strong tradition of oral literature, including folk tales, proverbs, epic poems, and historical accounts. Griots, who are hereditary oral historians and storytellers, play a crucial role in preserving and transmitting this rich oral heritage. They use their storytelling skills to pass down moral values, historical events, and cultural knowledge to future generations. The advent of writing and formal education has allowed some Fulani individuals to contribute to written literature. Fulani authors have written novels, poetry, and academic works that explore themes such as identity, social change, and cultural preservation. These written works serve as a means of documenting and sharing the Fulani experience, contributing to the broader literary landscape of the region. Art, music, and literature provide a means of cultural expression, identity formation, and social cohesion within the Fulani community. They serve as a medium through which the Fulani people express their joys, sorrows, hopes, and aspirations. These artistic practices also contribute to the preservation and promotion of Fulani culture, allowing it to thrive and adapt in the face of changing times. The Fulani people's artistic traditions not only enrich their own cultural heritage, but also contribute to the broader cultural diversity of the regions they inhabit. They offer a window into the creative and expressive capacities of the human spirit, transcending linguistic and cultural barriers to evoke emotions, provoke thought, and foster cross-cultural understanding. The Fulani people have a diverse range of religious and spiritual beliefs that have evolved over time. While Islam is the predominant religion among the Fulani, there are also traces of indigenous animistic beliefs and syncretic practices that reflect the cultural diversity within the Fulani community. Islam was introduced to the Fulani people in the 11th century through the efforts of Muslim traders and scholars. Over the centuries, Islam became deeply ingrained in Fulani society, shaping their religious, social, and moral outlook. Today, the majority of Fulani individuals identify as Muslims, 
and adhere to the teachings of the Quran and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. Islamic practices and rituals play a central role in the daily lives of the Fulani people. They observe the five pillars of Islam, which include the declaration of faith, prayer, fasting during Ramadan, giving alms, and undertaking the pilgrimage to Mecca, if financially and physically able. Mosques serve as important gathering places for prayer, community meetings, and religious education. Alongside Islam, the Fulani people often retain elements of their pre-Islamic beliefs and practices, which are rooted in animism. Animism is the belief in the existence of spirits and a spiritual connection between humans and the natural world. Many Fulani individuals still consult traditional healers, known as marabouts, for spiritual guidance and healing practices. There are also syncretic forms of worship among the Fulani, where Islamic beliefs and rituals are intertwined with local customs and traditions. This syncretism reflects the cultural diversity and the assimilation of pre-existing beliefs into Islamic practices. It is not uncommon for the Fulani to blend Islamic rituals with offerings to ancestral spirits or to incorporate traditional ceremonies into Islamic festivals. The fusion of Islamic and indigenous beliefs and practices has resulted in a unique religious landscape within the Fulani community. It showcases the adaptive nature of Fulani spirituality allowing individuals to find spiritual meaning and guidance through a variety of sources. Religious and spiritual beliefs among the Fulani provide a framework for moral conduct, social cohesion, and a sense of belonging. They offer individuals a source of comfort, hope, and guidance in navigating the challenges of life. The architecture of the Fulani people is a reflection of their nomadic and semi-nomadic lifestyle as well as their need to adapt to diverse environments and climatic conditions. Traditional Fulani dwellings are designed to be portable, functional, and suited to the pastoral lifestyle of the community. One of the most recognizable forms of Fulani architecture is the Fulani hut, also known as the Ha'are, or Sukurta. These huts are typically made of locally available materials, such as branches, grass, and mud. The framework is constructed using wooden poles, which are then covered with layers of grass and mud to create a sturdy and weather-resistant structure. The design of the Fulani hut is well suited to the mobile nature of the Fulani community. The structure is lightweight and can be easily dismantled and reassembled as the need for migration arises. This allows the Fulani people to follow their herds and access fresh grazing lands while maintaining a sense of home and shelter. The interior of the Fulani hut is simple yet functional. It typically consists of a central living space, often with a fireplace for warmth and cooking, and separate areas for sleeping and storage. The walls are lined with mats and blankets, providing insulation and comfort. In addition to huts, the Fulani also construct temporary encampments, known as Garawal. These encampments are set up during the annual Garawal Festival, a gathering of Fulani communities to celebrate and showcase their cultural heritage. The Garawal encampments consist of a series of huts, arranged in a circular or semicircular formation, creating a communal space for socializing, music, dance, and festivities. While traditional Fulani architecture predominantly revolves around portable structures, permanent settlements have also emerged in some areas. These settlements often consist of clusters of huts arranged in a circular or linear pattern, with communal spaces for livestock and social activities. The construction materials and techniques may vary depending on the region and availability of resources. The Fulani people have a rich culinary heritage that reflects their nomadic and pastoral lifestyle. Their cuisine is characterized by a harmonious blend of flavors, the creative use of locally available ingredients, and a focus on nourishment and sustenance. The diet of the Fulani is primarily based on dairy products, meat, grains and vegetables. Milk, in particular, holds a central place in Fulani cuisine, as their herds provide a steady supply of fresh milk. Fulani milk is used in various forms, including drinking it fresh, fermenting it to make yogurt or sour milk, and using it as an ingredient in cooking. Meat, especially from cattle, goats, and sheep, is another staple of the Fulani diet. It is often prepared in simple yet flavorful ways, such as grilling over an open fire or stewing with aromatic herbs and spices. The Fulani people make use of the entire animal, ensuring that no part goes to waste. They value the nutritional benefits and sustenance provided by their livestock. Grains, such as millet and sorghum, form the basis of many Fulani dishes. These grains are used to make staple foods like porridge, couscous, 
and flatbreads. They are often accompanied by flavorful sauces or stews made from vegetables, meat, or legumes. The Fulani people have developed traditional cooking techniques to maximize the flavor and nutritional value of these grains. Vegetables and fruits also play a role in Fulani cuisine, although their availability may vary depending on the region and season. One notable aspect of Fulani cuisine is the skillful use of spices and herbs to enhance the flavors of their dishes. Commonly used spices include ginger, garlic, chili peppers, turmeric, and local herbs. These aromatic ingredients not only add depth and complexity to the food, but also provide potential health benefits. Mealtime in the Fulani culture is often a communal affair, where family and friends gather to share a meal. It is a time for social bonding, storytelling, and the passing down of traditions. The Fulani people value hospitality and generosity, and guests are warmly welcomed and offered the best food available. In recent years, Fulani cuisine has gained recognition and appreciation beyond the Fulani community. Restaurants and food festivals dedicated to showcasing Fulani cuisine have emerged, allowing people from different backgrounds to experience the flavors and cultural significance of Fulani dishes. Music, dance, and oral traditions hold a significant place in the cultural fabric of the Fulani people. These forms of expression serve as a means of storytelling, preserving history, celebrating milestones, and strengthening social bonds within the community. Fulani music is characterized by its rhythmic complexity, melodic beauty, and the use of traditional instruments. One of the most iconic instruments in Fulani music is the zalam, a stringed instrument similar to a lute or a guitar. The zalam is played by plucking or strumming its strings, creating a distinctive sound that accompanies Fulani songs and dances. Songs in Fulani culture often revolve around themes of love, nature, and heroic deeds. They are sung in the Fulfulde language, with lyrics that are rich in metaphor and symbolism. Singing and music play an integral role in various aspects of Fulani life, including work, ceremonies, celebrations, and gatherings. Dance is another integral part of Fulani culture, and it is often accompanied by music. Fulani dances are characterized by their gracefulness, rhythm, and intricate footwork. They range from solo performances to group dances involving both men and women. Each dance has its own significance, whether it's a celebratory dance during festivals or a ritual dance to mark important events. Oral traditions are deeply rooted in Fulani culture, serving as a means of passing down history, customs, and moral values from one generation to the next. Griots, known as Gaulo in Fulfulde, are respected members of the community who are entrusted with the responsibility of preserving and reciting oral histories and genealogies. Through their storytelling, the Fulani people maintain a connection to their ancestors and the collective memory of their community. The art of storytelling extends beyond the realm of the griots. It is common for elders and respected community members to gather around a fire in the evenings, sharing folk tales, proverbs, and legends. These stories serve not only as entertainment, but also as a means of imparting wisdom, teaching moral lessons, and reinforcing cultural values. The importance of music, dance, and oral traditions in Fulani culture cannot be overstated. They serve as powerful vehicles for cultural preservation, identity formation, and community cohesion. Through these forms of expression, the Fulani people celebrate their heritage, transmit knowledge, and forge connections with their past and present. Festivals and celebrations are an integral part of Fulani culture, providing a platform for the community to come together, express their cultural identity, and honor their traditions. These festive occasions are marked by vibrant displays of music, dance, food, and traditional attire, creating a lively and joyous atmosphere. One of the most significant festivals among the Fulani people is the Garawal Festival, also known as the Yake. This annual event is held at the end of the rainy season and brings together Fulani communities from different regions. The festival is a celebration of beauty, courtship, and cultural heritage. Young Fulani men, dressed in colorful attire and adorned with elaborate jewelry and body paint, showcase their dancing skills and charm in an effort to attract the attention of potential suitors. The festival is a vibrant display of music, dance, and traditional customs, serving as a platform for social interaction, matchmaking, and the reinforcement of cultural values. Another important festival in Fulani culture is the Bori Festival. Bori is a spiritual practice that involves communication with ancestral spirits through trance and possession. During the festival, 
Participants engage in energetic dances, songs, and rituals to invoke the spirits and seek their guidance and blessings. The Bori Festival is a time of spiritual connection, healing, and rejuvenation. The Eid al-Adha, also known as Tabaski or Tabaski, is a major religious festival celebrated by the Fulani and other Muslim communities worldwide. It commemorates the willingness of Ibrahim, Abraham, to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God. The festival involves communal prayers, feasting, and the sharing of meat from the sacrificial animals. It is a time of joy, gratitude, and generosity, with families and friends coming together to celebrate and exchange gifts. Harvest festivals are also an important part of Fulani traditions, as agriculture and livestock rearing are significant aspects of their livelihood. These festivals mark the culmination of the agricultural cycle and the abundance of the harvest. They are characterized by communal feasts, traditional dances, and rituals to express gratitude for the bountiful crops and the blessings of the land. Traditional medicine holds a significant place in Fulani culture, offering a holistic approach to health and healing. The Fulani people have a deep knowledge of medicinal plants, traditional remedies, and healing practices that have been passed down through generations. Traditional medicine is intertwined with spiritual beliefs, cultural customs, and a profound understanding of the natural world. Herbal medicine forms the foundation of traditional healing among the Fulani people. Fulani healers, known as maraboots or traditional medicine men, possess an extensive knowledge of medicinal plants and their healing properties. They carefully select and prepare herbs to address various ailments and promote overall well-being. Herbal remedies may be administered as teas, infusions, poultices, or ointments, depending on the specific condition being treated. The Fulani people have identified numerous plants with medicinal properties that are used in their traditional healing practices. Plants such as neem, moringa, baobab, and kinkaliba are revered for their therapeutic properties and are commonly used to treat a wide range of conditions, including digestive disorders, respiratory ailments, skin conditions, and musculoskeletal issues. In addition to herbal medicine, spiritual and ritualistic practices are integral to Fulani traditional healing. The Fulani believe in the interconnection between the physical, spiritual, and emotional aspects of health. Rituals, prayers, and incantations are often performed alongside the administration of herbal remedies to facilitate healing and restore balance within the individual. Divination is another essential aspect of Fulani traditional medicine. Diviners, also known as gaolo, use various methods such as interpreting dreams, studying the positioning of objects, or employing oracle tools to gain insight into the root causes of illness. Through divination, the diviner identifies the underlying spiritual or metaphysical factors contributing to the ailment and prescribes appropriate remedies or rituals to address them. Massage, as we contemplate the future, let us recognize the invaluable contributions of the Fulani people to African development and integration. Join us in celebrating the Fulani heritage and its enduring legacy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel at NBO underscore Ben for more captivating documentaries on diverse cultures around the world.